Welcome and thank you very much for coming to our webinar today. So our webinar today is Library Research Basics. Um, that's, the presenters today are me, I'm Marianne Cullen, Ann Mallard, and Brittany Sterling. Um, I, have, I went to school online myself and I got tired of not knowing what people look like, so this is me. I am the Associate Department Head at Alpharetta and for the online campus, and this is my contact information. This is Ann, and Ann has reappeared here. Ann is the Associate Department Head at Decatur. And this is Brittany. Brittany is a librarian here at Alpharetta. She's our Instruction Coordinator, and she's going to be talking about additional ways to get help from librarians today. Okay, so what we're going to do today, we're going to just take a brief look at the library website and the research process. Um, I'm going to talk about the Gilfine Library Catalog. We have a new library catalog interface starting last May. Um, we have a brief overview of the research databases, and then, like I said, Brittany's going to talk about how to get more help and services from the library. So I'd like to know a little bit about you as we're talking, and so we can make our content as relevant as we can. So if you would type in the chat box or tell me if you are online only, face-to-face -face only, or both, are you a perimeter student or an Atlanta student? And is there anything specific that you want to learn in this webinar? Like if you are here for a specific class, or you have an assignment, or you have a specific question. So Layla, since you're, you're still on voice, would you like to tell me rather than type in the chat box? Um, well, I'm an, I'm, not, I'm an online student, mm -hmm. and um, I just want to be able to know how to use a, like the online library since I'm not really on campus. Okay, that's great. Mm -hmm. So I assume you're a perimeter student? Yes, perimeter. Okay. Um, Scott is both online and face-to-face. -face. He's in English, um, and Kathy is online only, perimeter and she wants some general information also. Okay, that sounds great. So I'm not going to talk a lot about the research process because we have so much to cover today, but coming into these resources, it's important to think about some things before you just jump right into the catalog or the databases. So one thing is to think about your topic or your research question. You may not have a fully developed thesis statement yet, but you might just have sort of an area or a question. So, you know, beginning of semester, my question was, how can I organize my time better? And unlike Google, you can't just type this question into the catalog or the databases. You need to choose some keywords. So what are the most important words in the sentence that will help you get to the information that you need. And I chose time and organize. And then I started making a list of synonyms and related words that might get me to information that has to do with these two topics. And I also thought of a couple of terms that had to do with both of these things together. So organizing my time would be the same as time management or scheduling. And as I did some preliminary research, I found that most things that looked interesting to me actually use time management as a subject descriptor. So I'm going to use that as my, my search term today. So you also need to think about the kinds of sources that will give you the information you need. Now, sometimes your professor will tell you, I want you to use this kind of source, and that's fine, too. But as you're, if you're deciding on your own, think about how deep the information needs to be. Are you supposed to be going really into depth and looking at research studies about this? Are you just looking for some kind of news article? So how deep is the information? How scholarly is it? Do you need to have scholarly sources that are peer-reviewed by subject experts? Or will a journalist or personal experience be the kind of thing that you're looking for? And then also think about the date. How old can the information be? If you're looking for information that's a, a criticism of a, of a work of literature, the date may not be as important as, say, if you were researching 
I'm trying to think of something that's much more current, like gay marriage or legalization of marijuana. Those are real current topics. So think about the date range of the information that's acceptable for you. So once you decide on the kinds of resources and the and the, uh, then think about where you would find those. So what I'm going to talk about is the catalog, and the main things you would look for in the catalog are print books, DVDs, other physical items. There's also eBooks in the catalog. In our research databases, these are mostly electronic resources, so you would find eBooks, streaming videos, journal articles, and other kinds of high-quality resources not available on the open web. Now, sometimes the web is actually a great source, just depending on what you're looking for. So if you're looking for something like government statistics, most of those are published on the web. Um, things like the EPA, the Census Bureau, those, those government agencies post lots of statistics and information on the web. Also, if you're looking for, for information about particular businesses. Um, and there are some journals, magazines, and newspapers that publish on the web now. And that would be... Um, the quality that you would get in the print. So what we're going to do is, is start looking for the resources that the library has, and all of these can start on the library website. So there's this widget right here. I'm going to go, um, in just a second, I'm going to share my, my screen on the computer. But for now, I'll look here. So right here, the, the first thing that comes up is called the Discover Widget. And this will get you to the databases. There's a, a search here that's called the Discover Search that will allow you to look in many, but not all of the databases. You can also go to particular databases down here or by subject here. There's another tab called the Catalog tab. This is what I'm going to be talking about. The Journals tab will get you to journals by name. You don't use the journal tab to look for journal articles. It's just if you want to look at a particular journal and you know the name of the journal, that's what you use that tab for. Research guides will get you to some help resources, and the reserves will get you to the items that we have on reserve at the library. So if you'll give me just a second, I'm going to share my screen. Yes? Yep. OK, excellent. Let me get my chat where I can see it. OK. People are saying yes. OK, so I'm guessing that means it worked. OK, so here we are on the uh, library homepage. Um, I'm going to go to the Catalog tab. And you can sign into your account here. You can search Georgia State University. This is a quick search for the catalog. You can also search all the University System of Georgia libraries from here. You can go to an advanced search, and you can go to something called browse search. Um, I, like I said, I'm going to search for time management. And it's going to open up the catalog. So you can see here I've got 8,570 items at Georgia State that have something about time and something about management in them. Now, this doesn't look inside the item. This looks at the title, the author, sometimes the chapters, the, sub the subject descriptors, so the main things about the item. If I was looking for something really particular, I might need to back up and think of a broader term where what kind of book would have this information in it. So I've, I've got these results, and I'm not going to look at all 8,000 results. So what can I do to narrow this down? Um, the limiters are over here on the left. So I don't want an online version right now. I want something that's in the library. So I'm going to check Available in the Library. And that takes me down to 2,888 items. I've decided I only want books. I, audio visual will get me to videos or audiobooks. Um, there's also journals, maps, and more things. I'm going to choose books. And like I said, you always need to check for the date. And I've decided, just sort of arbitrarily, that 2010 will be my date that I'm going to look for. So that got me down to 942. 
Now let's say um, I want I don't want to look for things from other libraries. I only want Alpharetta. So I can open up the refine search for the libraries and I can choose which libraries I'm willing to go to. Let's say I only want things at Alpharetta. You can also exclude, say I'll do anything but the law library or Newton, something like that. So now at Alpharetta there's only 21 and then some other limiters down here. So let's just look through these. You've got the title of the book, you've got the author, you've got some information about the book. This one was from 2014 and it tells me that this book is available at Alpharetta and it is also at some other campuses. So you can scroll through these and kind of get an idea of if you're on the right track or not and if you need to modify your search at all. Maybe you want more results, maybe you want less. Um, so I decide this first one is fine. I'm going to look at this one. You'll notice too that your limiters are up here. So if I decide, you know, I also go to Dunwoody. I want to change that. You can take that off and open up the search to more um, campuses or change it in whatever way you want. So I'm going to click on the title to get more information about this book. And it, there's a Get It tab, a Details tab, and a Virtual Browse tab. The Get It tab tells me which campuses have the book and whether or not it's available. So at Alpharetta, there's one copy. At Atlanta, there's one copy. Alpharetta's copy is available. Atlanta's copy is apparently checked out because there's zero copies available. Um, so I know that it's on the shelf, should be on the shelf at Alpharetta. Just looking at these other tabs, the Details tab will tell me more about the book. So it even tells me, in this case, the table of contents. Not all books have the table of contents, but this one does. Gives me some subject headings. So this can give me some more ideas about what the book is about. It also can give me some more subject terms. So I might decide, hey, orderliness or organizational skills, which in that case is spelled wrong, but if it was spelled right. The virtual browse is like walking up to the shelf. And you can just kind of like look through the shelf and see see what's nearby on the shelf. So that's what the virtual browse is about. So let's go back to the Get It tab. Now let's say that the Alpharetta one was the one that was not available. And I want to request it from the other campus. So to do anything like that, I have to sign in. And I can sign in right here. And I can sign in up here. Either one, it works the same way. So you choose that your student, faculty, or staff at Georgia State. And it remembers mine, but it's just your normal GSU sign in like you would sign in for email or, or pause or iCollege or anything like that. Then you click on request. And you choose where you want to pick it up. You can pick any campus. And you don't have to fill in the rest unless you want to. And then you click the Request button. And then it will keep, a, keep track of your request when you go to My Account up here. And it will tell you where in the process the request is. It should tell you when it gets to where it's going. If it's been a few days and it seems like it should be there and it's not, you can contact the library and say, hey, what's up? Is my book there? Now let's say I'm not going to actually request it. Now let's say that both of these weren't available and I want to get it from some other school. I can click on More USG Libraries and Gill Express Request and it shows me that this book is available at these other places. There's a whole bunch. Kennesaw's is checked out, but these others are available. So I'm just going to choose uh, Georgia Highlands. And it tells me there's two copies of Georgia Highlands. Both of them are available. And I don't need to choose which one I want. I just want one of them. I don't care. And I hit Request. And then I need to choose that I want to pick it up at Georgia State. And there's no apparent um, order to these, these places that they have listed here. So just pick the one. Just look for Georgia State. And then choose the library you want to pick it up, and the rest is optional, and hit Request. Same kind of deal applies where you get notification once it arrives. 
Do you have any questions about that? Okay, I'll keep my eye on the chat box. I'll keep talking. If anybody has any questions, I'll notice. Okay, so now let's say that we want to go um, look for other books by the same author. So the author's name is Daniel Levitin. There's not, you can, you can look if you have a title. If you have a title, you can use this pull down to say title starts with or exact phrase, but you don't get all of the, the limiters that you might be used to in a library catalog. So if you go to the advanced search, you can choose that I want the author to be Daniel Levitin. So there are seven results at Georgia State that have Daniel Levitin as the author. Um, you can also look within the university system. And so if I do my search again in all of the university system, you'll see now I have 11. So I might be able to get one from somewhere else if Georgia State doesn't have it. There are times where you might choose a book and it's not available at Georgia State. It's not available through Gill Express. This one, it does say there's four, so it should be available at Gill Express. But if there's not, you can also request it through Interlibrary Loan. That's your, that's your last choice, is Iliad. And you can click on that, and it will walk you through the process of requesting an interlibrary loan. That is handled by individual librarians downtown. It takes longer. Um, if you get books from another campus, it's usually two or three days. Sometimes it's even the next day. Um, Gill Express, which is from other USG libraries, usually come within a week. Sometimes it's less than that. And interlibrary loan usually would take probably two weeks for books. Uh, maybe even longer depending on how many libraries they have to ask before they find somebody who will give us the book. So that is the slowest, um, most labor intensive way to do it is interlibrary loan. Um, just to go back to, this, to the record of the item, let me go back to one that we actually have. There's some other things that you can find in here. If you go over to Actions, you can email a record of this book to yourself or to a friend. You can get a permalink that will help you get back to this exact record if you want to remember this book. You can add it to various citation helpers. You can get the citation. It will format it for you in various styles, APA, MLA, etc. Now, these are, there's even a warning on here to not, tr not trust these citations. Um, they're formatted by computer. They're subject to error. So don't just copy and paste it and put it in your, in your paper and think it's going to be fine. You need to double check it yourself. This one looks like it has no publication information, which is already odd in, in itself. So I would already notice that. So I think that's what I've got to say about the catalog. And if I'll still keep my eye on the questions, but I'm going to pass it to Anne. OK, can everybody see that, I hope? I can. OK, great, thanks. Um, so uh, we're going to be looking for uh, articles or other materials that we might find in our databases. And um, I'm back on the University Libraries homepage. And if you don't remember how to get there from any of the GSU uh, pages, you click on Students and then use the library link. That'll get you back here. Um, so there, there are a variety of ways to search um, our databases. Um, probably the most prominent and easiest one, or the first one you might decide to use, is this Discover database. And it's got some great um, uh, there are great reasons to use it. There are some reasons not to use it. Um, but I'm going to start with the Discover search. And I'm going to stick with Mary Ann's topic of time management. And so I'm just going to start my search here and search time management. I'm putting that in quotes because I want that to be searched as a phrase so the two words link together. And if I run the search,
I get a lot more results, as you notice, than um, we did when we were searching the catalog. Uh, the reason for that is I'm searching many databases. Uh, so I'm searching not just books, but articles. I'm also pulling up content from uh, our, our Gill find, our catalog. So you'll see books, which we would not be able to get into. Um, but you'll also see ebooks, which we can get into. And we do have a tutorial. I wanted to give you the link, but SpringShare seems to be down um, on my end. So if anybody is able to put that in, if somebody wanted to pursue that and learn about how to use our ebook collection. Um, but you can follow the links here for online access to get into ebooks. Um, so like with our catalog, or as with our catalog, um, I've done my search for time management. I can limit my search. Um, I can limit it uh, to the library catalog only. Um, this is a different way to access the catalog. Um, I can limit to scholarly and peer-reviewed journals. Um, also, as Marianne showed us in the catalog, I can limit by date. Um, I can limit to full text, which means the articles would be available here um, online right now. I can get to them. If I, uh, if I did not select that, I might have to track down the articles in another database or possibly request them through ILL. And I will say that ILL for articles is much faster than it is for books um, because typically you can get those um, electronically. So for to get an article, it might only take you 24 to 48 hours. They're real fast on that. Again, depending on your topic, uh, you may select, uh, you may choose that something more appropriate than 1675. And as, I, as I'm moving it, you can see it's already updating. So if I went with something like 2010, yeah. let's go with 2013. Uh, <laughs> you can play with that. And we can also limit to full text. And then we can look at the type of sources that we want to use. Uh, sometimes your professor may require you to use only academic journals. Um, but you may want to look at some magazines that would be more uh, written at a level for the more general public. Trade publications would be uh, usually specific to a particular industry. And then books and ebooks. You can also use the show more to see there are other types of materials that you might find within your search. Okay. And again, um, up here at the top, we can see what my search terms were, and then I can look at what my limiters were. So I searched full text. I limited it to um, 2013 to 2018. Um, and I said available in the library collection. If I wanted to get rid of that, I can remove just by clicking, or I can clear all my presets there all my settings there. OK, so I still have a lot of, a lot of results that I, I may not really want to go through all those. I may want to just look at a particular source or type of source. So I'm going to limit my search to academic journals. You, still, you see I still have way more than I probably can scan through. Uh, so one way to, to narrow my search is to start browsing and coming up with some additional terms. So um, I see this is an article about time management, and it's about college students. And that might be really relevant to what we're looking at. So I can add additional terms. One way to do that is to use the advanced search. And I can add college students. Okay. Another term I might want to use instead of college students would be university students. And you can see it's even suggesting other things like college students or university students or undergraduates. So I can try a couple of those. And again, I'm using my um, quotation marks to keep those, in fra those phrases together. Students. And I'm going to throw in undergraduates, too. OK. And if I run that search, we'll see what it does. Um, now, it's run my search again, but I, I have lost some of my limiters. So that's one thing you need to do. If you change your search, go back and make sure you've got all your settings the way you want them. So I'm going to go back and select full text. 
and then move my dates up again. And it might take a minute for it to update. Another thing I might, as I'm looking through, I'm seeing the titles of the articles, seeing authors, publication, various information you might need for your citations, as well as these subjects or descriptors. And those can be really helpful in helping you focus your search. And you're also, you would be using the same language that the database uses. Uh, so I might want to add something like, um, I'm interested in how time management affects the success that students have. So I might say student success or academic achievement. Spelling helps. OK, so I'm adding more terms. And I'm using, when I have similar terms or synonyms, I use or to join those to say, I'll. I'm looking for college students, but I'll take university students, I'll take undergraduates. Same thing with student success. That might be a phrase used, or academic achievement. And you can see, you can keep narrowing your search down, your results down um, by those, by adding more terms. Again, I did my search. I need to come back here and pull my dates back up. Okay, so for example, if we look at this first one here, personal factors predicting college student success, um, it tells me I'm looking at an academic journal, which is what I wanted. I can point to the little magnifying glass, and I get a little pop-up. You don't have to click. And that will give me an abstract or a summary of the article. Now, be careful with these abstracts. Um, when you're getting your information for your paper, don't use the abstract. That could be written by somebody who has nothing to do with this publication. Sometimes they're written by the authors, um, but uh, don't quote or uh, paraphrase something from the, from the abstract. Stick with the article. So I have the title. I have that other information. I have my subjects. And I have a PDF full text here. I'm going to go ahead and open up the article. Okay. Notice I can, this is the same information before. This, this time it's broken down and described. It tells me who the author or authors are, the source, which would be the journal, subject headings, um, additional keywords, and there's my abstract. Over on the left, I have my PDF full text. And then over here, I have tools to print, to email, to save, to cite. Uh, so if I wanted to look at a citation for this article, I would select whatever um, my instructor is requiring. It could be APA, it could be MLA, and there I see a citation. As Marianne pointed out, be careful with these. Um, I don't believe all caps is the way you're supposed to use to cite in, um, in APA. So you want to go back and double check those. Right. If you do want to print the article, um, it, what you want to do is, if it's a PDF, Sorry. Go over to open up the full PDF, and that's going to be just looks like a scanned image or a photocopy of the original article. So you would have all the pagination, you would have the graphs, charts, all the references would be there. So if you want the PDF, be sure and email from this level or print from this level. And notice when you email, um, take advantage that you can include this uh, citation when, with your email. So you would get an email that would have the uh, attached PDF. It would have a link, a permalink to the article, and it would have your citation. Again, you can get your permalink here. And you don't want to use the link at the top of the page. That will not get you back to your database. Right. OK, let me go back. So my result list, let's see if we have one, let's see. I'm going to take off my uh, see. results here. Okay, are there any questions about searching using the, um, the Discover search and how to add terms to narrow your, your search and how to set up expanders? I'll let Mary Ann tell me if there are. Um, I don't see the chat. No question.
No okay. questions. Okay. All right. Um, so let's um, go back to our. Um, I'm going to go back to the library homepage, and if I don't, I can back through, or I can just type library.gsu.edu. I did want to show you an example of an article that has HTML and a PDF just to see the difference. So I'm going to just do a basic search on time management again. And I'm going to select magazines and trade publications. Most of our, um, or at least mostly from what I see, the um, academic journals tend to provide PDFs. Okay. All right, how about this one, number, number three here? Notice that you have both uh, the full text and the PDF full text. So we, we've looked at a PDF but, uh, before, but just to see it again. So here's the actual article itself as it appeared in the magazine. But that same article is available, that information or the text is available in HTML. Notice that you would not get illustrations here. You wouldn't have charts or graphs, typically. You wouldn't get pagination. So if you're doing those in-text in citations and you need the page numbers, um, you wouldn't really know how to, how to select the page number. Um, but it's some, it, this is all up to the publisher. So the publisher determines how they're going to provide the information, whether they'll provide it with HTML or PDF. Okay. All right, I'm going to take us back to the library website again. And I showed you the Discover Search. There are other ways to search, and some, some reasons you might not want to use the Discover Search. Um, there are many databases that we have access to through GSU that are not searchable through the Discover Search tool. So for example, um, several of our uh, literature databases Gale Virtual, um, Bloom's Literature, and then uh, general databases like JSTOR um, are typically not searched. Uh, you can't search those through Discover. So depending on the database, uh, those are some reasons. One, they may not be covered. And other times, you might want to go directly to a specific database because of the, um, the formatting or the way it appears. Oops. Okay, I seem to have lost my link there. Spring Share is not working. I'm just going to pop over uh, and show you Galileo. Some of you may have been used to using Galileo as sort of your starting off point. Um, and just to compare, this uh, this box right here on the Discover on the uh, Galileo homepage, this is the same Discover search that I used over on the library's homepage. Um, databases A to Z corresponds to what I was looking at over here, databases by name. And that doesn't seem to be working right now. So I'm going to use the databases A to Z list and just show you, um, as an example, one of our business databases. And it has a, a very specialized interface uh, that you can use um, that would not be uh, some of these features would not be searchable if you were using the Discover search. Uh, for example, in business, a lot of times they talk about the SWOT analysis. And that's something that you can select that as a publication type. So there are times when you would want to use a specialized database or a database and use its specialized features that would not be available to you in the Discover search. So I hope that's, I hope that's clear. Another, another way to search databases is, or to find out, look for articles is to figure out what your discipline is or what your subject is and then find out what databases are available to you. You may not know the name of a specific database. Let's see if SpringShare is working for us. So if I was taking, uh, if I was interested in nursing, for example, and I wanted to see what databases are avail available, yeah, that's SpringShare again. Okay. Going back to the Galileo homepage. So if you ever have trouble with our getting in from our, the library homepage, you can always go to Galileo. Um, so this time I want to look by subject. 
and I'm going to select, you'll see they're, they're a little bit different. I was looking specifically for nursing, so I can break down medicine and health, and then find nursing and allied health. And then I could see a list of databases that were recommended um, to use. So that's another way to find articles on your topic, is by searching by subject, identifying a database, and then going into that database. And finally, uh, if you wanted to find the name, you had a particular journal article. Maybe your professor said, there was this really great article in a specific journal last month or in February or something. Go track it down. Um, but you didn't know what database covered that particular journal. You can search by journal name and then type in a particular journal title. You can then limit to e-journals only or all journals, which would include uh, subscriptions at the library holds or public or copies of the journal that the library has in, in hard print in hard copy um, at the various campuses. But you might, if you're just I don't have time to go anywhere else. I just need what I can get to from home. And you can type in the name of the journal. Newsweek's still around, isn't it? And this would tell me uh, where I could go to get uh, Newsweek. Let's see. Let's just try you online. And this shows me that Newsweek is indexed in all of these databases. And I can see what year. So if it's something back in 1996, I'm going to have to go back, go to Factiva to find it. Um, and I think Newsweek may no longer be around. Maybe that's why it ended at 2012. Okay, But that's how you can find. So the Journals tab, probably not going to use very often. But if you need to know where a specific journal is indexed, you can use, use that. All right. So I think, Mary Ann, I'm just going to check in with you and see if I covered what I needed to and um, pass the ball over to Brittany. OK. Um, no, there's no questions. But if you have questions, go ahead and ask. I'm going to pass this to Brittany. So if um, there were a couple of things I typed in the chat box while Ann was talking. There's a research guide about ebooks that tells you how to what the ebook providers we have. If you want to look at them on your mobile devices, that sort of thing, that kind of information is in the ebooks guide. So Brittany, you, you've got the ball. Can you see my screen? OK. Well, while uh, my computer is deciding to think a little bit, I'm going to cover kind of miscellaneous or how else you can get uh, help on the library homepage. One of the easiest ways to get help if you get stuck, especially um, since you all are online or partly online, on the main screen in the library homepage, right next to where Anne was showing you how to conduct your searches, on the right side of that, there is a box um, that says Live Assistance. And basically what, it, what that is, is it's an Ask a Librarian kind of feature. Um, we have, we just call it chat. Um, it's, it's staffed by librarians from all six campuses. And that's one of the easiest ways to get a hold of us. So I was talking about Ask a Librarian, and uh, <laughs> these are just two of us here. Um, I, if you go over to the, hold on just a second. Oh, OK. I'm sorry, y'all. This is my first rodeo. Thanks for your patience. <laughs> OK, so this live assistance box here is basically what I was trying to describe to you. It's one of the first things you see on the library homepage. Um, it, it looks a little bit different in real time, but basically you'll put in your information. Um, it asks you for a few other things. And this is the box where you would uh, type what your research question is. Or it can be everything from, for instance, Clarkson had a power outage this morning. You can ask us things like that to, um, can you help me find a book about 18th century art movements or something like that. Anyone on chat can help you with that. Um, the only thing is, just like kind of now, sometimes there's a little bit of a delay because we do have to go look for things or search the catalog. So if you just keep that in mind. Um, that you can also uh, see the library hours down here. And I'm going to, I'm not quite sure what's in the slideshow, but I think it's in here. There's also a way that you can text us. Um, and that will also come up in chat here. Um, and we will reply to you as quickly as we can. So. Moving on. OK, so sorry, I was a little premature. 
Actually, right at the bottom of this is an or search for an answer link that you can also use. And basically, where it will take you is here to the help and answers page. And this is kind of a collective, like, FAQ sort of page, like, very common. A lot of times, um, functional questions, like, what's the difference between PDF and HTML, or um, how do you cite certain things that are asked for a lot in assignments by professors. Um, what's the difference between a keyword and a subject? A lot of times we get asked those things a lot, so they're, they'll show up under this page. You can search, um, if you still haven't found it, you can use this search bar up here to look for your question to see if it's been there. These are the most popular on this screenshot. There's also recent ones, featured ones, and then you can narrow by groups, topics, or all over here. And of course, once again, the live help box is here if you try looking through all of this and you don't happen to find your answer. Um, one of the other things that's helpful to you is it will tell you when it's last updated because these are asked a lot. And if we've had a change to something like the catalog, like Marianne mentioned in the beginning, then you can see the most relevant information. Um, it'll also sort by topics and the number of views, um, which is very helpful to us to see if we are helping you. So, OK. Also, um, we've talked about research guides. If you happen to come away with this or come away from this and you've forgotten anything that we said, a lot of times the research guides are a great place to start because you can search by subject. And we have um, here at, uh, I've neglected to mention, Marianne and I are at Alpharetta. Uh, Anna's at Decatur. Um, here, we're kind of. I like to say catch-all librarians. We're liaisons for all the subjects, but downtown um, we have folks who focus on specific subject areas. They'll have created research guides for this. So what happens when you click on a research guide? This is what you would see. A lot of times there's a welcome page. It'll tell you about how to um, set up a research question or search strategy for whatever subject you're using. Um, you can look at how to find articles. Uh, it'll recommend. Sometimes people will have this as databases instead, and it'll recommend a few specific ones. So this is what you would see. OK. Um, there are some other tabs at the top, one of which will give you access to more workshops. Or um, like this page shows up as more webinars. Um, you can look to see what's coming up. This is a screenshot from Spring that showed some um, troubleshooting tips and tutorials that you could look at. There is also a list of other webinars. Um, and we have a few others throughout the fall, so this is where you would look for those things. Marianne has the navigation on this one. I'm going to switch back over to her. Hold on just a second. This is Marianne again. We're, uh, this is the wind down screen. <laughs> didn't know that. Um, so after this webinar is over, um, the archive will be posted on this same page. So if you want to come back and see it all again, it's going to be here or you can see the other webinars we're going to have in the future. Um, we also have a guide that's about video tutorials. Um, so there's tutorials on here uh, that will give you the, the 6 or 12 minute version of what we've done today. And are there any questions to wind up with? OK. Um, so we'll hang around for a few minutes after if anybody has any questions. Um, if you would do us a favor and give us some feedback on this webinar, this is the URL. It's a two-question survey in an empty box. Um, and so we'd really appreciate constructive criticism um, or praise, whatever we can. So if you'll, if you'll do that for us, um, that would be great. And I'll put our contact information up again. Also, there we are. So that's me, Brittany, and Ann, and our contact information if you have any specific questions for us. And thank you again all for attending. I'm going to turn the, and I send the archive to everyone who um, registered. So if you registered, I'll send you the archive. And if you are an instructor, I will send your students. Yeah, and you're welcome to share the archive link.